dynamic controllability of controllable conditional temporal problem with uncertainty Sorry. and uh, Jane Green present the paper. Uh, thank you for introducing. Uh, I am Jing. This is a joint work with my supervisor, Patrick Haslam. We're from Australian National University and also Data61 of CSIRO. Uh, this is the outline of my talk. Okay, the first question is, what is the long name here? The controllable conditional temporal problems with uncertainty. It's actually just the temporal problems with uncertainty plus something called controllable condition. The controllable condition can be regarded as controllable options. For example, in the evacuation planning, we need to evacuate the whole city before the flood blocks uh, the road here. So in evacuation planning, we divided people into different regions and assigned paths to them. Instead of giving a single path, we can give them some options. Like for region B, they can either go through G after uh, region A or go through G prime, which is a longer way to go. Uh, However, in the evacuation planning, there are many uncertain factors, such as we cannot control how long does it take for the flood to obstacle G, but we need to evacuate them before it, it blocks the road. Okay, that is CCTPU, controllable conditional temporal problems with uncertainty. Um, in the background of our research, the first thing is uh, dynamic controllability of STPU. A simple temporal problem with uncertainty is actually a CCTPU without options. It consists of t time points such as the nodes in the examples and temporal links, they are the links here. And within the temporal links, some of them are uncontrollable. They are called contingent links. And there are the red lines here for each contingent link, the exact duration is unknown before execution, but during execution, it may be any value within its lower and upper bound. And when it finished, we can observe the exact duration. So because of the uncertainty in these temporal problems, the authors also introduce three levels of controllability among which dynamic controllability is the most interesting one. Because if the STPU is dynamically controllable, there is a dynamic strategy which can satisfy all constraints. And in this strategy, every decision decides the future things based on past observations. And past observations is also called prehistory, which are the uncontrollable links finished uh, before that time point. For example, in the evacuation planning, instead of giving, instead of giving a, a, a fixed time point to evacuate B, we can do the schedule based on the observation of this contingent links. So after the observation, five minutes later, we evacuate B. Then no matter what happens for those two uncertain events, this constraint can always be satisfied. Uh, there are many DC checking algorithms, and among which I'm going to introduce the Morris cubic algorithm, because uh, in our method we also use this technique. In this algorithm, we for, they first transfer the STPU into a distance, labeled distance graph. Instead of using the lower and upper bound, each edge only have one weight. Uh, f furthermore, there are dynamic controllability reduction rules which are actually bound propagations based on uh, dynamic controllability. And in the cubic algorithm, it, they, propagate, they propagate the negative edges backwards in order to find a conflict. The, a conflict is actually a negative cycle in the label distance graph. So in this example, if we call the back, back propagation from here, and the dashed lines are all uh, added links based on the reduction rules, then we can finally find a negative cycle, which is actually the, 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 this one, but yeah, yeah, it's a negative cycle, which is a conflict. After finding the conflict, uh, Yu and the other authors introduced conflict resolution, which is the disjunctive linear constraints. In this conflict resolution, um, we can relax the bounds in order to solve a conflict. 
And here, relax means either tightening the contingent links, uh, which means we reduce the uncertainty, or extending requirement links, which means we extend the flexibility to deal with those uncertainty. This is the example of the conflict resolution. If this, uh, if within this negative cycle, we have already found in Morris cubic algorithm, and B uh, and the link B C is relaxable, then uh, the conflict resolution is the minus upper bound has to be greater than the the sum of the rest of the links, which is 65. So it means if the if the upper bound of this link is is smaller than 65, then this conflict does not exist at, exist at all. Okay, the, the last thing in the background is the definition of CCTPU. Um, first, I must just say this definition is different from the conditional STNU, because in, uh, in this model, the conditions are uncontrollable. In our model, the, the conditions are controllable discrete variables. And the assignments of these discrete variables are attached to the links. For, uh, here is a dis discrete variable C. And C equals G is a label attached to the links representing that B will evacuate through G. Okay, the current research on the CCTPU will get a solution that is uh, dynamically controllable STPU, but with fixed uh, assignment. What does it mean by a fixed uh, assignment? It means we have to do the assignment before the execution. So we have to decide B will evacuate through G or G prime at the beginning. Then we have to separate uh, uh, STPUs there. If we do dynamic controllability checking with these two STPU, we can find that both of the, neither of them can satisfy all constraints, which means there is no feasible schedule. So people like that like people are uh, passes G after uh, 130, they they cannot go. They are died at that that point. So. Our motivation is, what if we, we get more flexibility by postponing the decisions of discrete variables and so that we can achieve a fully dynamic, dynamic controllable strategy? And in this strategy, both temporal planning and the, sorry, temporal scheduling and the assignments on discrete variables are dynamically controllable. Uh, this is the fully dynamic execution strategy example of, okay, instead of making the decision at the beginning, we can make the decision after the observation of these contingent links. If, it, if the duration is smaller than 65, we, uh, we evacuate B through G, otherwise we evacuate B through G prime. Then we get two sub-networks and share the same prehistory. And in this way, okay, both, uh, um, and all constraints has been set, have been satisfied in this case. It means if we make the decision dynamically, we can get we can get a feasible schedule here. Uh, but the question is how to get the the condition of the prehistory pre here that we can make a feasible uh, dynamic fully dynamic mm -hmm. strategy. Here is our model. Um, we define dynamic controllability of CCTPU like during uh, the execution, every decision, uh, including scheduling and the assignment of discrete variables. They are they are all based on past observations, and there is a fully uh, dynamic strategy, including uh, execution strategy, which is um, which is a mapping from the uncertain situation to a schedule and the assignment. And also the decision time points of the discrete variables are also part of this, this, the strategy. So every, dis, uh, di, every assignment is made at its decision time point. In order to simplify the, the problem, we also introduce several assumptions here. The first assumption is that uh, the decision time point has to be before all links related to that discrete variable. But this assumption can be relaxed by remodeling the problem. And the second assumption is that the prehistory of the, the discrete variable C consists of the, the edges definitely finished before its decision time point. It's a little bit, 
uh, restricted. It's it's a conservative assumption. Uh, but within this assumption, we can have a, a settled set of prehistory. Um, so the third assumption is that the decision time point is the end of a contingent link, because we, we split the strategy after observation. Okay, but that, um, in order to give uh, the approach to check the dynamic controllability, uh, we also define dynamically controllable envelope of some assignment. And, and the envelope means is actually a subset of the prehistory. So under this, sub, under this prehistory, there is a fully dynamic strategy for the following phase. And f furthermore, we define a dynamically controllable envelope for STPU, which is actually the solution space of the constraints representing the conflict resolutions. So it means every instance within this solution space within this solution space is dynamically controllable instance. And if, uh, um, uh, if a CCTPU is dynamically controllable, uh, if there is a DC envelope that can cover all uncertainty in its prehistory. So it means no matter what happens in this prehistory, we can always have the following dynamically controllable execution strategy. Uh, in the in the example before, the DC envelope is actually the prehistory before 65, or the prehistory, sorry, the prehistory is small, uh, is greater than 55. Um, our algorithm starts with extracting the DC envelope from the STPU. Uh, it aims to answer the question like under which condition the current STPU is dynamically controllable. Mm, we we do this by modifying Morris cubic al algorithm. In Morris cubic algorithm, it will stop if it, find, if it finds one conflict, but we, we need to enumerate a, a complete set of conflicts. So we first repla replace the shortest pass algorithm by a DFS, then we drop some terminating conditions to deal with these two kinds of uh, uh, alternate conflicts. And after getting a complete set of conflicts, the dynamic, dynamically controllable DC, the DC envelope of the STPU is actually the solution space of the conflict resolution, which is a conjunction of the conflict resolutions. And in, in this example, we just uh, I use the variables and, and sum them up, and the value has to be greater than zero, which means I, yeah, the negative cycle does not exist. And if we have two uh, DC envelopes that are branched by assigning one discrete variable, then we can combine them t together by union the solution space. But before we do this process, we need to update the, the relaxable links. Only the, the links before the decision time points, they are the prehistory can be relaxed. And, and, if, uh, um, and we test uh, if a uh, DC envelope covers all uncertainty in its prehistory, but by test, uh, its negation is infeasible. So in, this, in, in our, our example, we have two DC envelopes. Uh, the, they are branched uh, by assigning C equals G or G prime. One is XBC has to be smaller than 65. The other is XBC has to be greater than 55. Then we combine the envelope here, which is the disjunction. And the negation is the uh, conjunction here, and it's invisible. It means the problem is dynamically controllable. Okay, but in a CCTPU, there are multiple discrete variables. We assign them in cr chronological order. Um, and when we are achieving the leaf node, which is a fully assigned CCTPU, it's a STPU. Then we uh, get, the, get its DC envelope. And we aggregate those envelopes together every time we're updating the relaxable set and combine the solution spa space together. And the algorithm will, will stop if it finds a, a DC envelope that can cover all uncertainty in its prehistory. 
This is our experimental result. We compared the implementation that, uh, that is a DC checking algorithm with fixed uh, assignment. So more than 12,000 test cases are infeasible if we want to do uh, fixed assignment, but only no more than 4,000 are still infeasible if we do it dynamically. And we also compare the runtime here. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, okay, the runtime comparison is about like uh, under certain limita time limitation, how many pro problems can the, the implementation solve? And here, the dynamic, the implementation with dynamic assignment is even better than the fixed assignment because the implementation with fixed assignment is trying to prove the infeasibility here. Okay, um, conclusion. So our paper formulates the dynamic controllability of CCTPU, and we also use experiment, experiment to, to show that dynamic assignments can get more flexibility than fixed assignment. There are many possible future work based on this paper, like because we have, um, because we introduced those assumptions, so the current algorithm is sound but not complete, but it's, it, it, it is complete based on those assumptions. So one of the future work is to relax the, uh, the assumptions. Um, we can either remodeling the problem or expanding the current algorithm to rela relax those assumptions. Um, and we can also do optimization model based on the dynamic controllability of CCTPU. And the other work is about, like, uh, the other future work is about um, we can transfer the resource conflicts into discrete variables. That's all of, of my talk. Thank you. Um, we open up for questions. Uh, so, um, so we thought about extending this to um, stochastic uncertainty. Oh, uh, you mean use distribution or? Yeah, like a PSTN or you know, CC PSTN U or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we 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 have done some work on the 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 on the STPU with distributions, but not options. Um, I think it's not very difficult. It based on how to deal with the distribution. If we only cut the distribution into lower bound, uh, into like we, yeah, we, if we cut the distri distribution and get lower bound and upper bound, then we can use this algorithm. Any other questions? Oh. So, can you talk a bit more about the assumptions? Okay. Uh, okay, the assumptions. Okay, the first uh, assumption, uh, like the decision time point has to be before all lengths related to the d discrete variable. It can be relaxed by remodeling, like we just uh, use binary variables. Each binar binary variable means we don't do uh, we don't assign a, a value to that variable so that we can postpone uh, one decision, uh, one assignment into, se uh, into se several decisions. Yeah. And the second one, um, I think we need to introduce other reduction rules here. Yeah. Um, there's no other questions. Let's thank the speaker again. Okay.